Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about a ENT topic called chronic pharyngitis. Chronic pharyngitis is a chronic inflammatory condition of pharynx. You see guys, they are saying here pharyngitis. You know the itis itself means the inflammation. The chronic pharyngitis which means it is a chronic inflammatory condition of the pharynx. Pathologically, it is characterized by hypertrophy. So, you know hypertrophy is the increase in the size of the cell. You can see the size of the cell is increased here. The sizes of what? The mucosa, the hypertrophy of mucosa, seromucinous glands, subepithelial lymphoid follicles and even the muscular coat of the pharynx. Now you can see here in this picture the hypertrophy of the seromucinous glands. These are the seromucinous glands. Those glands, what do they do? They secrete a fluid which is uh, somewhat watery and less of the mu mucus. So intermediate fluid, these seromucinous glands, when they are hypertrophied, that is the size of cell is increased. And then we saw the hypertrophy of the lymphoid follicles these are the lymphoid follicles which are found in the pharynx they have showed here very clearly these lymphoid follicles there is a hypertrophy of these follicles along with them the muscular coat of the pharynx you can see here the muscular coat of the pharynx is also hypertrophied so these things again guys what is it characterized by hypertrophy there is hypertrophy of what the mucosa seromucinous glands lymphoid follicles and even the muscular coat hope it is clear next uh, this is what i showed you the lymphoid follicles the hypertrophy then let us look into the types of chronic pharyngitis the chronic pharyngitis are of two types chronic catarrhal pharyngitis and chronic granular pharyngitis that is hypertrophic nothing but granular pharyngitis so one is catarrhal and the other one is granular two things are there catarrhal pharyngitis and granular pharyngitis starting with the etiology of chronic pharyngitis what causes a chronic pharyngitis is First thing is a persistent infection in the neighborhood. So you see in the neighborhood of the pharynx, what are the structures found and what's happening? Uh, there is some infection, persistent infection in the neighborhood, which is affecting the pharynx. In the chronic rhinitis and sinusitis, the purulent discharge constantly trickles down the pharynx. So guys, you see here, they're saying about rhinitis and sinusitis. Rhinitis is nothing but the inflammation of the nasal mucosa. And sinusitis is the inflammation of the nasal sinus. So all those inflammatory conditions will secrete a fluid. Watery nasal discharge will be there which will be trickling down to the pharynx and causes a infection and irritation in the pharynx resulting in chronic pharyngitis which provides a constant source of infection. This causes the hypertrophy of the lateral pharyngeal bands. We saw here the hypertrophied uh, lateral pharyngeal bands. The pharyngeal bands are going to be hypertrophied. This is what's happening. The first thing is a persistent infection in the neighborhood. Now you can see in the picture here the uh, sinusitis, the sinus which is filled with the pus and then the inflammation is found. When the chronic sinusitis and rhinitis is found, it will trickle down to the pharynx causing an infection and chronic pharyngitis. The second is the mouth breathing. The second cause, the etiology of the chronic pharyngitis is the mouth breathing. Breathing through the mouth will expose the pharynx to air which has not been filtered, humidified and adjusted to the body temperature. So basically what happens when you inhale the air through the nose, it is going to humidify the air. The uh, like the hairs, the nasal hair which is present, the follicles, hair follicles, what are they going to do? They are going to purify the function of the hairs which are present inside the nose. What do they do? They filter the air, they will humidify the air and then adjust it to the body temperature. Then the air gets inhaled and it goes inside but when you breathe in through the mouth there is no such mechanism found the air is not going to be filtered neither it is humidified nor it is adjusted to the body's temperature 
thus it is making more susceptible for the infections so what all the foreign bodies present in the air will get uh, in uh, like you inhale it inside they get inside the body it will make you susceptible for infections it is due to obstruction in the nose why do people do mouth breathing there must be some obstruction in the nose that is nasal polyp so you see here the nasal polyp the, the polyp is nothing but a painless benign growth it is a benign localized growth which is going to be painless it is found in the lining of the nose or in the sinus this could be a cause for the obstruction in the nose the deviated nasal septum allergic or vasomotor rhinitis so the rhinitis what i told you the inflammation of the mucus uh, nasal mucosa mucus membrane of the nose if it is caused because of some allergy or it is a vasomotor condition then uh, this could be an obstruction in the nose so guys what is uh, what is causing the obstruction in the nose there are three things the nasal polyp dns and rhinitis obstruction in the nasopharynx protruding teeth and sometimes the habitual uh, mouth breathing without any organic cause so whenever the protruding teeth are there and sometimes people are habituated for mouth breathing uh, maybe they might have some stuffy nose from like they are suffering with chronic uh, uh, cold and uh, rhinitis and everything what happens in them what do they do uh, they start breathing from the mouth that could be habituated they can continue for the same thing and then that could also be a reason for chronic pharyngitis you can see in the picture here the protruding teeth and the girl has a habituated mouth breathing okay the third cause now it is chronic irritants the excessive smoking chewing of tobacco and pan heavy drinking highly spiced food all this will lead to chronic pharyngitis you can see the habits the bad habits of smoking excessively smoking chewing of tobacco pan heavy drinking so smoking alcohol uh, tobacco and pan and a highly spiced food will lead to chronic pharyngitis then we come to the environmental pollution the smoky and the dusty environment or the irritant industrial fumes may also be responsible for the chronic pharyngitis so what all is responsible if a person is taking uh, tobacco alcohol chronic uh, smokers and then highly spiced food all this can lead uh, to chronic pharyngitis then we come to the environmental pollution the fourth etiology that is if there is a smoky and dusty environment and the uh, irritant industrial fumes will also cause chronic pharyngitis then the faulty voice production you see this is an important cause for the chronic pharyngitis the excessive use or a faulty use of a voice in certain professions or pharyngeal neurosis where a person resorts to constant throat clearing so guys you see here the faulty use production of voice like in singers those people who rap and everything they you the faulty voice production excesses of strain straining your pharynx a lot so they are uh, putting a lot of strain or faulty uh, way of producing the voice so the faulty use of voice in the certain professions the pharyngeal neurosis the anxiety which is causing them to resort uh, which is making a person to constantly clear his throat the hawking snorting so guys snorting is nothing but making a sudden explosive sound through the nose they may cause a chronic pharyngitis especially the hypertrophic variety we saw there are two uh, the hypertrophic granular hypertrophic variety that can uh, be caused because of the faulty voice production this is what they are saying here so etiology let's summarize first thing we saw persistent infection in the neighborhood that was chronic rhinitis and chronic tonsillitis chronic sinusitis and even the dental sepsis then mouth breathing obstruction in the nose nasopharynx the protruding teeth which prevent the apposition of lips habitual without any organic cause chronic irritants like smoking chewing tobacco heavy drinking highly spiced food then we saw the environmental pollution that is smoky and dusty environment irritant industrial fumes the faulty voice production that is excessive use of voice by teachers or something like that professors and a faulty voice production rappers singers we where a person resorts to constant throat clearing this is the etiology hope the causes are clear let us see what are the symptoms which are felt by the patient who is suffering with chronic pharyngitis it the symptoms will vary from person to person starting with the discomfort or pain in the throat it is found especially in the mornings 
foreign body sensation in the throat they will have a constant desire to swallow or clear his throat to get rid of the foreign body so basically when you find a foreign body sensation in the throat it is a tendency that you want to just gulp it in so there is constant desire to swallow that foreign body so that he can clear his throat and get rid of it there is tiredness of voice they cannot speak for long and they have to make an effort to speak as the throat starts aching so you have seen people who suffer with chronic uh, pharyngitis they have a tiredness of voice they really can't speak uh, louder they make effort to speak they start clear uh, because the throat starts aching the voice may lose its quality and it may even crack so it's chronic so the voice can land up into cracking voice cough more often of the uh, if the mouth may induce retching and gagging so you see here uh, the person also retches that is uh, like uh, retching and gagging like in vomiting what we do so it is a uh, mere opening of the mouth Bec in the cough what do they do there is mere opening of the mouth and it is also inducing the cough is that severe that it is inducing the uh, gagging and retching retching okay these are the symptoms so i hope the symptoms are clear guys starting with uh, discomfort and pain in throat foreign body sensation they want to swallow they want to get rid of the foreign body third thing tiredness of the voice they make effort to speak because their throat aches the quality is lost they, uh, the voice can even crack in the cough there is mere opening of the mouth and also it is inducing retching and gagging okay next thing you can see here the person is coughing opening of the mouth and even the retching and gagging starting with the signs now first one is chronic catarrhal pharyngitis in this there is congestion of posterior pharyngeal wall with the engorgement of vessels fascial pillars may be thickened so you see here there is congestion of the posterior pharyngeal wall the vessels are also engorged the fascial uh, facial pillars will also be thickened so guys you can see here in the first slide or the next slide itself here the posterior the congestion you can see the congestion of the glands and even the blood vessels are engorged you can see the blood vessels being engorged here okay then we come to the granular type in the granular pharyngitis the pharyngeal wall appears thick and edematous with congested mucosa and dilated vessels you see here the wall is thick and edematous you can see in the granular pharyngitis the wall is being thick and it is also edematous then we see uh, the mucosa is congested and dilated vessels posterior pharyngeal wall may be studded with reddish nodules that is the reason it is known as granular pharyngitis what is it called why is it called granular pharyngitis it is because it is studded with the reddish granules reddish nodules or granules hence the term granular pharyngitis these nodules are due to the hypertrophy of subepithelial lymphoid follicles which are normally seen in the pharynx so guys what's happening basically there will be lymphoid follicles whenever these lymphoid follicles will be hypertrophied that is increase in the size of the lymphoid follicle see this lymphoid follicle is supposed to be like this what's happening there is hypertrophy of the lymphoid follicle it is increasing in the size as a result what's happening it is forming a sort of nodules hence it is known as granular pharyngitis it is given here okay then what else have they told there is hypertrophy of the lateral pharyngeal bands like how we saw in the uh, catarrhal type same way even in the granular type there is hypertrophy of the pharyngeal bands the uvula may be elongated and appear edematous you can see here in this it's uh, more clear the uvula being edematous and also hypertrophied normally what's happening the uvula is small and uh, tiny and then here it has become edematous and also the hypertrophy increase in the size of the cell okay now let us look into the etiology of the chronic pharyngeal oh no we are done with uh, the etiology it is both for the same last thing is the treatment etiological factor should be sought out and eradicated so if there is a uh, faulty voice production you should ask them to leave their profession if it is a smoking environment switch the place whatever the etiological factor is smoking heavy drinking ask them to stop drinking mouth breathing habitual you ask them to start breathing through the nose whatever the etiological factor is treat the etiological factor and it should be sorted out and it should be eradicated 
the voice rest and speech therapy in those with faulty voice production you see people who have a faulty voice production who are habituated to that you have to ask them to take a voice rest and speech therapy should be given hawking clearing the throat frequently should be stopped so they have a habit of uh, clearing the throat frequently that has to be stopped warm saline gargles especially in the morning are soothing and relieving the discomfort mandel's paint can be applied to the pharyngeal mucosa so you guys uh, they have given about uh, mandel's paint here mandel's paint is nothing but a throat paint it is used in the treatment of pharyngitis laryngitis and so on it will protect the throat from the pain and also produ- uh, it also prevents from the canker sores of the throat so this mandel's paint can be applied to the pharyngeal mucosa which gives a relief to the patient from the pain cautery of the lymphoid granules is suggested with 10 to 25 percent silver nitrate so guys you see here in the lymphoid uh, the lymphoid follicles are going to be enlarged in the granular pharyngitis so they are doing the cauterization of the lymphoid follicles and also with the 10 to 25 percent silver nitrate with this we come to an end of chronic pharyngitis hope everything is clear if you have any doubts put it down in the comment section and if you like my video hit the like button and subscribe